I'm Nick Boros, space industry analyst and founder of Roto ET Consulting, and I listen to the Cold Star Project. This show is for entertainment purposes only and is not what is termed professional advice. The Cold Star Project is proudly presented by the Operational Excellence Society. Cold Star Tech is a supporter of the OPEX Society, and Jason Canigan is a member of its board of advisors. Talk with us at Cold Star Tech to find out what we can achieve together with your Lean Six Sigma or Operational Excellence programs. And check out opexsociety.org to learn more. I'd also like to remind you to check out the America's Future series, the non-political speaker series on uh, U.S. national security and space and defense. Great discussions. Uh, Cold Star Tech is a promotional partner of the America's Future series and vice versa. You can check out their website at americas-fs.org. Sales come in easily when the economy is doing well and everyone's fat and happy. But what now? Things aren't looking so great, and you and your team had better be on their A-game when it comes to selling. My guest today is a past president of Glazer Kennedy for eight years, Nick Louisi. Wonderful guy. I've enjoyed working with him over the years. And we are talking about what to do if you're running an owner-led sales team, particularly for a brick-and-mortar business. So listen up because we're gonna be talking about whether you have to change your sales process or create a sales process. Nick, welcome. Nick, you and I have worked on projects together before and I really wanted you on so that we can discuss uh, some serious problems owner-led sales teams have, particularly at brick and mortar uh, businesses and sort of signs that that there there is opportunity for improvement here that they should be listening to us, that that help is available, right? So I appreciate you coming on. Uh, let's talk first about what the symptoms are for this kind of business owner that uh, should be getting them to, you know, their ears should stand up. <laughs> well, uh, Jason, first off, thanks for having me on. And, and you've done a, you do a great job for the entrepreneur community. Uh, you're, you're a give, right? You give a lot of information, you care, you you're an entrepreneur, so you know what it's like to be in the trenches. And so you really do a great job of really helping entrepreneurs crystallize their thinking. And this is something that I don't think that they think about enough, hmm. right? Because when they're the beginner phase, right? The introductory phase of their entrepreneur journey. They're this, hopefully they're the seller of their services, right? They're the marketer of their services, the seller of the services, and no one's going to do it better than them. No mm-hmm. one's going to, you know, they intuit, I always say to owners, you intuitively know what's going to happen in the sales call or the sales process just by the question that the person asked 30 minutes ago, because you've heard it and seen it and mm-hmm. done this. So they have blinders on when it comes to running the sales team because they think the sales team should be selling like themselves. Mm-hmm. is isn't never going to happen. They're not owners, right? They're not the founders. First off, they're not coming in from that level of hierarchy. Second of all, they just don't have the reps, right? They haven't done it so many times. The second thing that I will say to your, your question, which is a great question, and most business owners don't think about it, is they should be the business owner. They should be the chief strategist. They should be thinking about how do I add value to the marketplace? How do I add value to my customers? But how do I add value to my customer, to my company? How do I get an enterprise value evaluation, right? Maybe it's, maybe it's going to be three X. How do we get it up to five X or seven X or things of that nature? They can't be doing that when they're in the minutia of managing the sales team. And let's face it. I'm a business owner, you're a business owner, you know, forgive me, Father, for I, I have sinned. We have AD&D, right? So you that you have to force yourself to really get in the trenches, to listen to the calls, to manage the the um to manage the KPIs, to manage the SOPs, also to really do the due diligence of really having intriguing one-on-ones with with salespeople. So long and short of it is entrepreneurs are phenomenal. They drive, what, 90% of this economy, right? They are the largest employers in aggregate in the United States. They have done some phenomenal things of launching their companies. They have done some phenomenal things of bringing value to the marketplace, i.e. somebody's paying me for my goods and services, especially in a traditional business or brick and mortar business. But I stand and before you today to say they are horrible sales managers. And I don't mean that disrespectful, but they are because of the reasons that we talked about. Okay. And I, I know 
I don't know how many times I've heard uh, a business owner say to me, all right, Jason, I'm going to get around to listening to a sales call. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it never happens, right? Weeks right. go by. And right. they mean it. They apologize. They want to. But uh, the fires just keep popping up in front of them. Oh. Uh, and, and, and and this conversation is not in any way, shape, or form meant to, to, to belittle them, right? Mm-hmm. It's just to say there is a better way and there is a better process. And there's probably a very economical way for them to, mm-hmm. to get this service taken care of for their business. And really, at the end of the day, what we see with the companies that we work with is we see an increase in sales. Whether that's a 10% increase in sales to 33% increase in sales, we see a derivative of driving a process. So mm-hmm. now you have a systemized sales process and system and KPIs and playbook. So goes back to not everybody's thinking about selling, but if they are thinking about selling, they need to have this stuff codified so that the person that's buying the business realizes that there is there's a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of systems and processes here, and it's not just a business that's been running on whims. Mm, a business that's been running on whims, folks. <laughs> does that does that sit with you? So we just said that it would be best if business owners could get down into the trenches and the minutiae and listen to right. some of these things. But we also said they don't really do it and they're not going to do it. Right. right. So what, <laughs> what are they supposed to do then? You've alluded to they could get some help, some hired help. Uh, What about the fear of, oh dear, I'm handing over the reins of my sales department, which is the energy producer of my business, right? The cash flow producer of my business to someone I don't even know. Well, first off, you're not handing anything over to anybody, right? It's still your business. You're still responsible. If you have the right partner, they've done an intake with you to have Mm -hmm. a fully understanding of where you want to go and what you want to do and what you want to achieve. And they're, in essence, the conduit, right? I always say, hey, listen, I translate owner speak, right, to the rank and file salesperson. And so you're not handing anything over to anybody, especially if you partner with us in our model. But what you are doing is you've brought an extra set of eyes and ears and, and, and a talent to the table that is focusing on driving your KPIs, your objectives, really helping you hit your number, whatever your revenue number is. But they're not, I always say, listen, you're not throwing me the keys you know, to the kingdom in the parking lot and running out of here, right? This is still your house and you. we're going to focus on what you want to do and what you want to achieve. We're just taking care of the minutia stuff and we're codifying things and we're coaching salespeople to get to the level that you want them to be, but it's all on your watch. It's your company. Okay. Does that help? Does that yeah. answer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So nobody's giving up control. Nobody's no, educating. No. <laughs> they are, you're still responsible, but you're yeah. getting this help to sort of magnify what's going on in that area and, and, right. and get results uh, by codifying things and systemizing things. Okay. So, and, and, and to take that step further, you and I come from a world and I'm a firm believer of it. Um, and even, you know, the coaching world, right. Mm-hmm. We've come from that okay. world and I'm from, I think it lifts you up. Yeah. Um, but right now we're in the middle of the NBA, uh, series and we just watched the NCAA and the masters. Every one of those players had a coach, right? Mm-hmm. So in essence, you're bringing a sales coach in that's, you know, if you're, if you're a golfer, you may have a swing coach, you may have a putting coach, you may have a, a you know, a mental attitude, positive mental attitude, right. Or performance coach, um, and that's what we bring to the table. It's really a series of coaching um, objectives, right? Keeping them focused, uh, getting through the clutter or breaking through the clutter. Because many times, you know, the salespeople aren't going to open up to you what's going on in their personal lives. But once we build up that rapport and trust, we could get to those conversations with them. And it's really just about maximizing their performance and their production, right? And as well to help you maximize your revenue and your profit. Right. And you just pointed out something very important for business owners to understand. As much as you like them, love them, they like you, there's always that disparity of power in the employer-employee relationship that I need to call out here, that they can't tell you the full truth because it could be a career-limiting move, but they can tell Nick. 
Right. <laughs> okay. Oh, and I can have that crucial conversation with the owner yeah. of saying, hey, listen, every time you run by so-and-so's desk and you say, hey, what'd you put up for me today? You know, you're causing anxiety mm-hmm. in them and, and it's not motivating them like you think it is, is actually shutting, you know, Susie down or Johnny down mm-hmm. or, you know, whomever down. And, you know, I know you mean well you're a good person. You're a nice person. You want the best for them and you want the best for your company, but it's having unintended consequences. And those consequences I know is, aren't what you want. Right. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm a truth teller. I really, I got no skin in the game. I'm not worried about getting fired. uh, And I'm not worried about, you know, uh, not being able to work for the company. If you bring us in, you bring us in in totality and I'm not Mm -hmm. doing a good job if I'm not managing your house. Right. Exactly true. I go back to 1999, Nick, in uh, my second post-university job. And it was sales in the power generation industry. And uh, I was in this, it was a multi-million dollar business. It made good products. It was well known in the industry in the Pacific Northwest. And I was in this trailer. They had multiple buildings in, in a lot. And uh, the salespeople were in a bullpen in this trailer in cubicles. And I really, I knew nothing about sales at the time, really. Like I did not have a consistent sales process. I just do product and and pricing information and stuff. And, uh, but what I could pull out was that the guy across the hallway from me in his cubicle was doing the job differently than the way I was doing it. Now, what kind of an impact does that difference have on customers calling in and the experience that they have and your reputation? And how important is it to codify and have a playbook and a consistent sales process for all your people like you were talking about? So I think it's huge, right? With the caveat, Hmm. there's a caveat. We're really for the bottom to middle to upper middle performers, right? That have potential and have talent. Mm. And we want to codify a system for them. And we want to codify a process for them and teach and train to that, right? Much like goes back to the analogy of the sports team. There's a playbook, right? There may be a top performer that is just 90% of your revenue. We're not going to touch him. We're not going to mess with him. We may try to figure out how he does what he does and codify that for the underperformers, right? But there's just an intuition, much like the owner's intuition that you you have that you're never going to mess with, plus the fact that he isn't going to listen or she's not going to listen. I've been doing this long enough to know, right? And I was just laughing. I was just talking to a rep for a client right before you and I got on the phone. We were joking about... The Manufacturer's Alliance books, right? The big mm-hmm. books, the mm-hmm. binders that you would just be in the cubicle calling. There's dirt. That's how they're doing it, right? And I'm like, you're, you're taking back to my youth. I had a mm-hmm. lot of hair, but that's how I started. I didn't know enough to know. And they gave me a script and scripts and I learned the scripts. And then I, you know, it, it worked, right? You know, picking up the phone and calling people and following scripts and then making the script my own, right? You know, not new, not changing in a totality, but giving it the words and phrases that I would. And I remember our sales manager coming and the gentleman that recruited me into to the world of sales, who I still as they love, um, you know, he brought us in and said, okay, we're going to practice our scripts. And I was the only one that could do it. Now hmm. it was a couple of weeks in and I was nervous and I did it really fast, but you know, he just laid into everybody. He's like, you know, We didn't spend all this time and energy hiring you. We didn't spend all this time and energy uh, training you and also creating these scripts and these playbooks and everything for you not to follow them, for you just to have meandering conversations that are Mm. going nowhere with people. You're doing a disrespect to the brand, as you said. You're doing a disrespect to the customer, you know, Mm. and you're doing a disrespect to yourself. So. I learned fast and furious. It's really all about a system. It's really all about a process. And it's really, I try to, I, I, I'm a student of scripts, right? I, and I'm a maniac on scripts and scripting, but then you got to make the script your own, right? So it's like a really good movie or TV show. The script is the script, but they're going to do impromptu along the way just to get better at it because there is that ebb and flow that you get of when you're with a customer. So okay. to answer your question, It's crazy important to move your low, middle, and high performers to extremely high, but you've got people that are knocking out of the park, you know, 
you never change them. You just try to figure out what they're doing. And over the course of time, building trust with them, Mm -hmm. getting them the nuance, letting them realizing that we know what we're doing. We, all of our team is sellers, right? We don't, we haven't brought people in that have never sold anything in their life to a client's account. And so the best always want to get better. Eventually they find their way to us and they just, they, you know, it's just minor tweaks with them. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Let's talk about, we, we've got some notes here. Uh, it's the difference between a, a, let's say there's a grumpy business owner. He's frustrated with his sales team or she is. And they, there's a difference though, between uh, knowing that the sales team is underperforming or just believing that they're underperforming. Let's dig into that a little bit so that our listeners can figure out which situation they might be in. There isn't a business owner out there that's paying for leads that doesn't think that a higher percentage <laughs> of those leads should, should close. Hmm. That ain't going to change, Jason. Uh, it's as old as the, you know, you know, you go back to the the, the carpet, uh, go back to the the, uh, the marketplace when they were selling carpets and camels and whatever else they were selling. That person walking by, they should have thought that they should have closed that. So you're never going to change that philosophy and that way of thinking. And we'd be foolish to think that, that we could. But what we say is, let's let the data show us right? Lied, guide us and get into the nuances. And that's why we really love working with, with business owners that have an operating system, right? Whether it be EOS or ENO or just some operating system, you know, KPIs, dashboards, those type of things. Because that data will tell us where we want to go, right? And so what can they do? What should they be doing? What does that day look like? Right. So if they're doing 60 outbound calls, could they be doing 80 outbound calls? Can we put systems and processes and technology in place so we get them more productive? Right. So that's one way of getting things to where they go. Things are sitting in the pipeline. Hmm. Pipelines are a little bit elongated now. We'd be, you know, we're sitting here today, first week of May, right? Things are, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the marketplace, some bank failures. Pipelines are a little bit elongated, but that still doesn't give us excuses. We just have to figure out how to really move them through the pipeline faster. So we're going to take a look at what's the velocity of things sitting in the pipeline. If historically it's 30 days, but Nick's got everything in his pipeline and it doesn't close for 90 days, well then, yeah, there's some issues there. So let's figure out what's going on with that. Um, and so the data, the listening to the calls, the the one on the specific one on ones that we are doing, not the the handsy pansy mansy ones that people do. Hey, how was your weekend? What are you going? What's going on? How can I help you? What do you need closed? What's coming in this week? That's not a one on one, right? You know, so what's going on specifically? Where are you at? What did you hit last week? What did you hit last month? What did you hit last quarter? Okay, what's your pipeline look like? Okay, what's the probability of going on with this? Not you know, everything is going to close. What's the real probability of that? And what does your production and your calendar look like? Mm -hmm. So on a daily basis, what does that is? And that's why we could see and say, are they productive? Are they doing what they should be doing? Or is there some flexibility that we could get them to flex them up? And nine out of 10 times it is, right? Nine out of 10 times it is. Okay. How does business owner know whether they have visibility into what's going on or not? Is it just that data or are there other factors? Well, there's leading and lagging indicators, right? Mm -hmm. That they should be managing, right? So there's, it's not just all about the pipeline, but mm -hmm. it is, you know, how many new logos or new accounts or new prospects are they putting in? What does it look like? What does their production look like? How many touches do they have going through, right? So there's everything that you could possibly look at uh, from, uh, that perspective. And we got, we got 90, we got a checklist of 70 things that you should be looking at. Uh, and if you're, if you want to provide it for your, uh, for your listeners, that's, we'd be more than happy as a gift to your audience. Um, and then it's really just drilling down on the leading and lagging indicators. And so it's all about the leading indicators. So that way you can see what's going on uh, in, the, in the pipeline, right? Because we want to manage closed sales because that's tangible. Mm -hmm. But there's 15 things and 15 things might be hyper hyperbolic. Maybe it's five things or maybe three things that have to happen before that sales close. And if we're not managing those front end things, we'll never know what their true uh, pipeline is. Okay. Okay. Nick, 
there's a weird thing in here talking about uh, whether they know they have a constraint in their sales process or not. Let's let's describe that for a business owner to understand whether there's a bottleneck in their sales process or not, and if yeah. so, whether they should be talking to you or not. So I'm a big COI fan. I, I you know I learned this in business school, and I think every and you come from a manufacturing background, you come from a production background. This is sexy, right? And it's it's not <laughs> sexy because it's it's it, you know talking about theory of constraint or TOC, right? Or you know where's this constraint in the marketplace? And so you really need to see where in your sales system. This comes from plotting out your sales system, right? So putting it on a flow chart, putting it on yellow. We used to do a workshop where we did these on yellow sticky notes of every step in the sales process, right? Um, and looking to see where do sales stall? Where do they get clogged? What is happening? Why are things getting stuck? And so we look for where the constraint is and then you feed the constraint, right? You got to figure mm -hmm. out how do we how do we eliminate this constraint so that we can maximize throughput on the sales process? And it might be that, we are, I just had a client the other day or a prospect the other day. He's, he's doing, he's a proposal mill, right? He's mm -hmm. losing so much business because it gets lost. The constraint is it goes to proposal, right? And that's it. I mean, so we, well, one is how can we fix that? What do the proposals look like? How do we frame the pre and the post proposal for that? But how do we move it past that? Because that's where the constraint in his sales process is. And sometimes it's easy to get to, and sometimes it's not, right? Sometimes you just need somebody that sees a lot of different sales systems and processes so you could see. Sometimes you need somebody that has a lot of different technologies that they could bring to the marketplace to help. And sometimes you're doing things just because intuitively you always did that, and that's how you built the business. But it's really some of the things and tactics that you're doing are causing the constraints. So how do we move that out? Okay. So folks, what Nick has been talking about here is whether there's an issue in your sales process or your people's sales ability and identifying which one of those needs to be attacked first, right? Um, you might have to change your sales process or you might have to create a sales process. And I can't think of two better people to do that <laughs> because I'm a process engineer by trade and Nick's been doing this for a long time. So Nick, tell us about how sales performance team and you work with uh, people with, with business owners. What are yeah. some engagements, uh, you know, structured like? So for, I want to go back a step because you okay. said something very, very, very important mm -hmm. um, that I believe that you need outside help, whether it's for a short period or a long period, right? And you need somebody that has seen a bunch of different systems and processes, right? And sales structures and lead generation tactics and lead generation structures and all that stuff like you do with your clients and like we've done together and our clients and, and like how I do. And I also think that you should have somebody that's agnostic, right? You know, that is in all different industries because I spend a percentage of my time in the let's call it the online advertising world. Mm -hmm. Well, they're doing some really, really cool stuff that that is really, 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 really good on the lead generation side and knowing you know different audiences. And I bring that, what I learn, and I bring that to more traditional businesses as we talked about the brick and mortar businesses. But I think sometimes the brick and mortar businesses do a much better job on, on building lifetime value, building customer experiences, things of that nature. And so you could bring that to the online advertising world, right? Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of work with agencies, right? So what does that look like and how do they get things in the door and how do they manage the expectations and that? And so I think you need a, a firm and a company that you want to work with that is not just in one uh, industry because all they have is a hammer. And all they know is they're looking for screws or, or excuse me, for nails, right? But you need a toolbox of all different processes and systems so you go things through. So in essence, that story tells you what we do, right? Mm -hmm. So we either come from short-term engagements. I got a problem. I think I got a problem. Give me a fresh set of eyes to see where there's a problem. And then we do a very extensive audit, if that makes sense. We might mystery shop, right? We just will. And then we'll start or we'll listening to some calls and we'll start working with some stuff. Right. And then um, from that, we could codify it in a report and hand it to you. We don't like doing that. Mm 
because that's a consulting relationships. And we'd like to be more of a tactical partner with you. And so we, what we like to say is, okay, let us work together and implement the sales processes and system, but also means test it, right? And also work with your team. And so then we could do that. Or with some people, goes back to how we, you and I first started, they throw us the keys after a couple, you know, month or so of working with us to the sales team and say, hey, just manage it for us, right? Mm -hmm. Keep me in the loop. Keep me, we're going to have weekly meetings or bi-weekly meetings or two times a week meetings, whatever that is. So they know exactly what's going on. And we agree on what the what that looks like. And so I like to joke that each one of our engagements is like the, the proverbial box of chocolates uh, that Forrest Gump had. You know, everything is different, um, but it's all around the sales process. <laughs> But sometimes we have to get into the marketing process and marketing mm -hmm. system and what's the totality of it. So it's it, it, it's how we work together and we structure, we fit every budget, right? And we structure um, we structure the deal to how you want to deal, right? So you could you could buy the Chevy Volt or you could buy the Mercedes Z class. It just depends on what you want. Okay. And I've seen this a lot in the defense industry, folks, presidents complaining, oh, I hired this consulting company and they did an audit and then they handed it to me and walked away. And it's like, aren't you going to help us? Well, Nick here he is going to help you <laughs> to the degree that you allow him. You know, he's going to get in there and mix it up in the trenches and make sure things actually move forward. All right, Nick, where should people go? How should people sign up with you if they want to talk about how you can help them? Well, you know, that, that report that we've that we've created, right? So it gives them an overview of where it is and it just allows them to kind of say, yes, this is me or no, this isn't me, right? Because everybody, nobody wants to kind of look in the mirror and say, you know, I need help or, you know, or I got issues. That's the first thing. They could check us out online at, you know, very simply salesperformanceteam.com. Uh, they could look at us at... Um, LinkedIn, right? Just to show that we have credit, street cred, and we, you know, we know what we're doing. And, you know, I've been in all industries. I've had my, own, I've owned my own company, been in private equity, been in venture run firms, right? So I, there isn't a sales systems process or industry or founding and funding mm -hmm. um, platform that I haven't worked in. Uh, and so, you know, we're here for you. You can email me, uh, quite, quite frankly, at nick at um, salesperformanceteam.com. So we, we try to make it as easy as possible for us. Um, and, uh, you know, we're here for you. All right. Thanks for doing this, Nick. I, I think people are going to get a lot out of it. Thank you, Jason, uh, for being just a calm presence. <laughs> and you really bring some phenomenal guests, right? And I, and in your, your level of preparation is, 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 is top shelf. Uh, and you know, you really have fun with these. I think I can mm. see it in your face, your eyes light up, uh, but you do a great job, uh, with these interviews. And so I hope your audience appreciates the, uh, the work that you do. All right. Thanks for listening in to Nick Louisi and myself talking about sales performance team and improving your results. If you'd like a copy of that free report on nine reasons why you need an outsourced sales manager, just connect with Nick or myself, particularly on LinkedIn, shoot us a message. We'll get that over to you. And remember, if you're a brick and mortar business owner and running a sales team, things are not gonna correct themselves on their own, okay? They're not gonna fix themselves. You have to do something. And odds are, you're not the person with the time and the energy and the expertise to do it, are you? So it would make sense, a lot of sense, to reach out to Nick Louisi and sales performance team to get this taken care of. And your team on the path to great results. All right, I'll see you soon.